just like it, the word. Uh, years ago, I said, I see women and I see them doing great things. But what I just want to make sure is that they keep their tank full because I know with kids and jobs and careers and grandbabies and new things that you're trying that sometimes we get drained really quick. And so what I wanted to do is have something that we could gather as women and we could be refreshed in the Lord. Because what we believe is that God has a plan for you and he has a plan for you to do great things in this world. He wants to impact, he wants you to impact your corner of the world. But sometimes, honestly, when we get dry, it, that makes it really hard. So what tonight is, it's about being inspired and just stirring you up and being encouraged. And so I wanted to invite um, my friend, Selena. I don't know if you girls have seen her yet on the Zoom, but Selena Freeman is, um, she's a pastor. She is the pastor at the well in Springfield, Missouri. That's actually my birthplace and that's where I'm from. Um, but I actually met her uh, this year at a conference that spoke and I was so impressed. And I said, whatever we gotta do, but you know, Selena is like all of us. She is a uh, juggling family, uh, career, uh, children, and um, she, she's a mother. So she got to celebrate her daughter's wedding a couple weeks ago. And so she's going through all these changes and dynamics, just like we are. She's hosting Thanksgiving. So there's all these different things that make up us as women, whether we're a leader out front or we're in the background and we're a leader or we're leading our children. And so God has brought her to us. But you know what is interesting, Selena, is we were just talking about today, hosting Thanksgiving and laughing and talking about how crazy this time is. But you know, um, 29 years ago, I was in a very different place this night. I was in the hospital ready to give birth to my second son. Well, I thought I had it all figured out. I thought, man, I can literally go in, take a shower before I go to the hospital and I'm just gonna plop this baby out and still have makeup and hair done. Well, that didn't happen, you know, because birth is not really that easy. But it's really a lot like right now. Right now, in the pandemic, during the pandemic, we are birthing things out like crazy, not necessarily children. We're birthing out like Dixie. She's birthing out what it means to be a grandmother that comes along and helps her daughter and her son-in-law and those great grandbabies. Or we're other people where we're, we're diving deeper into our career or we're making changes on the fly. Or like a lot of moms right now, looking at what is coming in the schools. And so we're doing all this transitioning. But uh, Selena, I just want to welcome you in. And girls, I'm going to pray for Selena. And then Selena's going to speak to us. She's got a special word. God, we thank you for Selena. We thank you for these women that have gotten on. We believe, God, that you've got something very special for us. That tonight is about us. And it's good because it's about receiving. And it's about um making our tank full and making sure that we are living a vibrant life. So Lord, we thank you for Selena and the word she has in Jesus name. Amen. So Selena, just, uh, we are so excited to have you from Springfield, Missouri. Yes, I am so excited to be here with you ladies. And, um, you know, obviously I would love to be there with you in person. I would love to shake each of your hands, but it's awesome how the Lord is allowing us to come together like this. And so I am, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Um, you know, when Laura reached out to me, which I, when I met Laura, we've only met one time and she had such an impact on me. And so you ladies are so incredibly blessed to be under her ministry and to get to do life with her because she, she has been such an encouragement to me. So 
uh, yeah, yes, you are very, very blessed. But, you know, she said that she would like for us to get together and that you guys do this gathering called Refresh. And so I just tried to think about in my own life um, and calling when it comes to scripture and, you know, what has been something that has had such an impact on my life and has been so refreshing in my life. And there is a particular passage of scripture uh, that I want to share with you guys tonight and kind of pull from. And I, man, I hope it impacts you in the same way that it has impacted me throughout my life. And so I'm going to start with that scripture. And I hope, I hope you guys have a notepad or something. You can take some notes tonight. Um, because I hope this is something that you're going to go back to as well. But the scripture that I really want to talk to you um, about tonight is John 15, 16. And this is what it says. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. So it would be very much like Jesus speaking to us. And he says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. And I share this passage of scripture with you guys because every time in my life, when I sense that the Lord is calling me into a new season or the Lord is calling me into a new assignment or the Lord is trying to take me through a pandemic, <laughs> right? This is such an incredible reminder. First of all, and I'm, I'm going to unpack this, but you know, this idea that, that God chose us, he, you are chosen in this season, in this pandemic, in your family, in your home. And not only has the father chosen you, but he has placed an, an appointment upon your life. He, he, you have assignments that he has created you for, and he promises us in his word that whatever he has chosen us for and whatever he is appointing us to, he is going to give us everything we need to be able to accomplish that. Okay, let me just get an amen out there. Amen? Amen. Okay, so I, I just want to tell you guys, you know, a little bit about myself. Um, Man, I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a, in a, in a wonderful farm family. I'm a farm girl. Um, I showed registered Holstein cattle for 18 years of my life, which is funny because I don't live on a farm anymore. But, uh, you know, I grew up in a wonderful farming community and uh, a wonderful little church. And when I was about 12 years old, I really began to sense God speaking to me and, and God calling me to do something. And, and, you know, I, I wouldn't even been able to tell you that it was a call to ministry because I didn't understand that. And, you know, maybe like some of you, I don't know, of course, now you're part of the church of the Nazarene and you, you Laura is one of your pastors, but, you know, I grew up in a church where women did not lead. Women did not preach. I had never seen a woman lead in a church really in any capacity other than maybe just leading a song service or or teaching and and yet I I I, ha I had this call upon my life and I felt like it was some call to ministry and so I thought you know maybe I would become a missionary or maybe I would marry a pastor or you know something along those lines and um when I was 29 years old God got a hold of my life in a radical way. It, it was actually when he, he sanctified me. And, you know, I had been a Christian since I was six years old. I had walked with the Lord all of my life. But at 29 years old, after I had, I, I went to college to be a television news anchor. And uh, then I wound up working in communications and, and all, and I was a volunteer at my church. But, but finally, when I was 29 years old, I came to this understanding that God was calling me into ministry and, and what that looked like. And, you know, I remember I, I went to my mom and my dad and I, and I talked with my mom and dad and they, my mom and dad are incredible people. They, they've taught me my whole life. I could do anything I wanted to do, but man, they said, no, I mean, I was 29 and they're like, Selena, you, you can't be a pastor. You can't preach, you know, that's, you can't do those things. And so 
it, it was such a, a very hard time in my life and a very overwhelming time in my life. And at that point in my life, God sent me this passage of scripture. And I just want to say, ladies, uh, tonight, <laughs> I just believe that, that God is speaking this message for all of you. But I feel like there are a few of you who you need to hear this tonight because you know and you sense that the Lord is moving in your life and he is placing this uh, assignment upon you and this appointment for this season and this time. And I want you to hear these words once more. This is what the Lord said to me, because I remember saying, Lord, wh what do you mean? I, Lord, do you not know that I'm a female? Lord, do you not know that my family doesn't even support this? Lord, do you not know that I can't do this? And, and he says to me, he says, Selena, you didn't choose me. You didn't choose this. I chose this. I chose you. And I have appointed you to do this. I've appointed you to, to produce fruit for me. And I will give you everything that you need. Okay. So if you're, if you were going to write down three words tonight, and I, I'm going to unpack these, I want you to write down chosen, appointed, and equipped. And I want you to write your name. I see Amy and Dixie and Paula and Kelly. Uh, you know, I want you to write these down, these words, and I want you to write them to yourself. And it says this, chosen, appointed, and equipped. And so I want to look at this idea, first of all, tonight about being chosen. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Jesus is saying to you, I chose you. In Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, it says, even before he made the world, okay? Even before he made the world, God loved us and he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. He decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. I want you to know tonight, according to Ephesians 1, 4 through 5, that before God made the world, he knew you, he loved you, he chose you, he chose you to be without fault. He decided to adopt you into his family and you gave him great pleasure. That's what scripture says. You are chosen. It also tells us in Matthew twenty-two fourteen. 14. Now here's where the rubber meets the road, okay? Because it says in, in Matthew twenty-two fourteen 14 in the Amplified Bible, it says, for many are called. And in parentheses, it's, it has the word invited. So in that passage of scripture, to be called means to be invited. It says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called or invited, but few are chosen. And here's what that means. We are all invited to the table. We are all invited into relationship with Jesus Christ. We, are all, we all have a call of God upon our life. But the reason it says that few are chosen is because God can only choose from the ones of us who show up. He can only choose from the one from the one who will accept the invitation. You have to accept his invitation before he can choose you for the assignment and the appointment that he has for you. And so here's what I'm saying to you tonight. It says many are called, but few are chosen. You have to show up. <laughs> you have to accept the invitation. You have to be obedient to Jesus Christ. You have to jump through the hoops. You have to prepare yourself to be used. Some of you right now, and I get it, I have been there. You are so sick of jumping through the hoops. You know, you're like, is it ever going to be my turn? Is it ever going to be my season? Lord, I have, I have done this and I have done that. And I feel like I am still waiting. And I just want you to know tonight that God has chosen you. Scripture clearly tells us that we are chosen. We have a call upon our life. But for you to walk in the call that God has chosen you for, you have to show up. 
You have to walk in obedience. And, and I want you to know that tonight. And uh, I, you can't quit. And guys, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've gone through some of the most discouraging days of my life over this past year. It has been incredibly hard to walk through this pandemic and this I am three days off of quarantine I I just got over COVID so uh, we we COVID hit our church in our entire staff tested positive we had about 50 cases in our congregation I just knew we were going to make the national news but praise the Lord we did not <laughs> I mean it, it's been it's been rough you know so so we're doing church online right now but I want you to know that you, that you have been chosen by God. The second thing I want you to know, and this is powerful, that when he chose you, he also appointed you. In, in John 15, 16, it says, you didn't cho choose me, I chose you. And then he goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, and I appointed you. He assigned you, he called you to produce lasting fruit. Now, here's the thing about lasting fruit. You guys, God created us with eternal significance. When he talks about lasting fruit, he is, he is telling us that our life was created for eternal significance. That's what fruit, that's what the lasting fruit, fruit that will last for all of eternity. He has created you to impact the lives of people in a way that will last for all of eternity. Every single one of you, every single one of you have a, an appointment upon your life that will matter for all of eternity. In Ephesians 2.10, this is one of my favorite passages of scripture, we read, for we are God's masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. We were created anew in Christ Jesus, which means when we accepted the invitation to follow Jesus Christ, when we accepted the invitation to be sons and daughters, he created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Before God created you, he thought of you and he planned you and he knew the appointments that he would place upon your life. And Ephesians 2.10 says that he planned things long ago, good things for you to do. And when you accepted his invitation to live in relationship with Jesus Christ, that you have been appointed to do good things. Psalm 139, 16, and if this doesn't refresh you, I, I don't know what can. This, this is a refreshing passage of scripture. It says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day passed. Before God created you, it says that he had recorded every day of your life that he had a purpose and he had a plan for you. You have an appointment upon your life. And ladies, I want you to know tonight, none of us are qualified. None of us feel equipped. You know, there has never been anything in my life that God has called me to do that I felt like I could do that I felt qualified to do, that I felt smart enough to do, that I felt equipped enough to do. And that's because I, I wasn't any of those things, but he is what makes us those things. He is what equips us. He is what gives us the strength and the knowledge and the wisdom. Uh, he is what does that. And I know so many times, and I right now in your life, every one of you right now, Either God is using you in a particular assignment or an appointment and maybe you don't, don't feel equipped for it or he is showing you what he wants you to do or what he's calling you to do. And you're, you're, you're telling him right now, Lord, I can't do it. I can't. Lord, I can't do it. You've picked the wrong person. 
you know, read the story of Moses. Moses made every excuse in the book when the Lord called him to be the one to lead out the children of Israel. Gideon made every excuse in the book. You know, uh, all we that's one of the commonalities we see all through scripture. God always called people who didn't think that they were equipped to do it. And when they came to a place of surrender, God used them in incredible and miraculous ways. Um, you know, when the Lord began to call John and I, my husband and I, to plant this church in, in Springfield, we, um, we had been youth pastors for, um, uh, for 18 years. And I started out, I, we were just volunteer youth workers. Uh, we were volunteer youth workers in a church of 30 people. We had two teenagers in our youth group, and we met in the choir closet of the church because that's how tiny the church was and you could literally fit like six people in the in, in this we were in literally the choir that some of you don't even know what I'm talking about but back in the day churches had a closet where they kept the choir robes and that's where we met with our two teenagers in with the choir robes in the choir room with six chairs and that was 25 years ago <laughs> And if you would have told me 25 years later that God would have allowed us to do the things that he has allowed us to do, you know, I would have told you there's no possible way. And, and so when the Lord kind of began to call us into this new season, into this new assignment, uh, one of the things we had to do is we had to go to a assessment. We had to go to a church planting assessment. And I was so embarrassed. I felt so ill-equipped to do it that I was embarrassed to even go. And I was embarrassed to even tell John that I wanted to go. And so what I did is I filled out the paperwork. And part of the paperwork is we, we had to do these spiritual gift assessments in order to be accepted to go. And I knew if I told John what I was doing, he would say no. And, and he's wonderful, but you know, he's realistic. So I literally filled out all of his personality assessments for him. I pretended like I was him and I filled out all of his paperwork. Yeah. And so we get, we get there to this church planning assessment and there's like seven other couples there and, and we get there and you have this booklet and in this book, like your, our pictures in the booklet. And John is like, what in the world are we doing? What, what Selena, what are we doing here? Why is our picture in this book? What is going on? And he, because he loves me so much and he, he stuck with me through the, through the weekend and, and it was, you know, we, we, we got through the, the experience and, you know, people just affirmed us and, and said, okay, we approve you to plan a church. And we had, even after we got approved, we didn't have any plan to plan a church. We didn't think there's any way that God could use us to do something like that. And here's the reality. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on the Lord because I am, I am as ill-equipped as any person that you will ever meet. But in four years time, the Lord took 28 people and turned them into a thousand. In four years time, the Lord moved in and through us. In four years, we had three campuses between those three campuses, we had over a thousand people. And I'm just telling you this, ladies, because I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew that the Lord had chosen me to do this. I knew the Lord had appointed me to do this. And it brings me to my last point here, and I'll wrap it up. The Lord equipped me. The Lord will equip you. The Lord is equipping you because here is what we read in this passage of scripture. And this is a passage that used to confuse me. I'll, it, I, it really did. But it, he literally goes on in John 15, 16 to say, and the father will give you whatever you ask for using his name. Now, here, here's what this does not mean. And we know it doesn't mean the Lord's going to give you everything you want. It doesn't mean the Lord is just going to make everything easy. What this, this, what this promise is saying is that if you will choose to accept the invitation, 
and the calling that God has chosen you for, and you will walk in the appointment that he has created you for, that he will give you everything you need to do what he has chosen and appointed you to. He promises he will. He promises he will. I am living proof of that. And so the, the last thing I want you to know, number one, you are chosen by God. Number two, you have been appointed by God. You have assignments and calling upon your life that he has, that he is moving you into. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is that you have been equipped. You are being equipped and the father will give you whatever you need, whatever you ask for using his name to fulfill the assignment that he has placed before you. Hebrews 13, 21 says this, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. Now, here's the deal. He's not going to equip you to walk in disobedience to him. He is not going to equip you to do something that he hasn't appointed you to do. But he promises he will give you everything you need to do his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. He has promised. <laughs> and some of you, the reason you've never known the Lord's, the full measure of the Lord's equipping, hear me, you've never known the full measure of the Lord's equipping is because you've never walked in the full measure of his appointment. You're never going to know all God can do in and through you until you completely surrender to him, walk in total obedience to him, and, and walk in, this, in the appointment that he has before you. Okay, so here's what I want to talk, here, here's how I kind of want to close this tonight, and I, uh, I just wish I could be there with you. I hope the Lord is speaking this upon you. You know, guys, there are different seasons of life. And I love what I love. I can tell about your church just from being on here. There are young ladies here, uh, clearly in your 20s, maybe even some in your teens. There are ladies here who no doubt are in the middle of raising your children. Uh, there are ladies here who are grandmothers uh, who have gone through all the different, you know, seasons of life. Ladies, their seasons of life are a blessing. And I just want you to know, for those of you who are raising your little kids right now, there is no greater assignment. There is no greater appointment in your life than to raise your children. I was a stay-at-home mom for six years. I, I, I stayed home with, and, and, and some of you may, and some of you may not, and I, that, you know, that's wonderful. But I'm just telling you, my kids are both married now. It's crazy. I can't believe I, I'm an empty nester. I cannot believe our kids are grown. And I, there, I look back to those years that the Lord gave me with our kids and mamas don't give up. Ah, oh, that is from the Lord tonight. He sees you. He knows the work that you do. He, he knows how hard I can't even imagine those of you who are trying to educate your children right now during this pandemic and all that that entails. But you are, you are fulfilling one of the greatest assignments of your life right now in raising your children. And, and for those of you who, you know, you've gone through that season of life and maybe you feel like, you know, I've been there, done that. And I just, I just, I think I'm done. You're not done. If you are still breathing, you are not done. And God has an appointment upon your life in this season that you're in. He has assignments upon your life in this season that you are in. And, 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 and we are never done. And, you know, if maybe there's some of you who are very young and you, you or, or maybe uh, you're single. Maybe you're a, one of our, our ladies who is single and walking out your singleness. And, man, I just want to encourage you in that. It is a gift it is a call of God. It's an, an appointment that God allows us to go through in different seasons, and he wants to use you in that. But here's the last part I want to talk to you about tonight, and then, and then and I'll, and I'll close. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, it says that uh, you can, do it, during the seasons in our life, right, as women, we can do it all, right? We try to do it all. It says we can do it all, but we can't do it all at the same time. 
okay? We can't do it all at the same time. And that's why the Lord gives us seasons. That's why he gives us different seasons of life. And I want to encourage you to embrace the season that you're in and know that the Lord is preparing you for the seasons to come. And so th that brings me to this final illustration I want to, I want to share with you. And it's, it's the illustration of the seed, the soil, and the fruit. The seed, the soil, and the fruit. So, you know, we read in John 15, 16, that God has chosen you and he has appointed you to go and bear fruit and, and eternal fruit, everlasting fruit, fruit that will last and that he will give you, he will equip you to do that. So how do we produce this fruit? Well, there's different seasons we go through. We go through the seed season, we go through the soil season, and then we get to experience the fruit season. And here's what happens. And, and these seasons repeat all throughout our life. Every appointment that the Lord places us in or every assignment that the Lord places us in, we have to go through these three seasons. So first there's the seed season. And, and during the seed season, you have to receive instruction. You have to openly receive instruction. You have to allow the Lord to bring correction. You have to allow the Lord to bring conviction. You have to learn. And some of you right now are in this seed season and the Lord is speaking to you and he's instructing you and he is showing you new things. And you have to receive that instruction because the seed has to know where to be planted. The seed has to know where, what the next appointment or the next assignment is, because once you get out of the seed season, you move into the soil season. The seed has to be planted. The seed has to be planted in the soil. And here's what happens in the soil season. In the soil season, we have to freely accept correction. We have to change. We have to transform, and ultimately, before the seed produces fruit, what does the seed have to do? The seed literally has to die. The seed dies, and some of you are in that season right now. You are planted in the deep, dark soil, and you feel alone, and you feel like you have been waiting forever and you feel like you are so tired of being still and you are so tired of not being able to move on into this next season. But if you are in the soil season, you have got to ask, Lord, what has to change? Where do I need to be corrected? What has to be transformed in my life? Lord, what, what has to die? Where do I have to die out to selfishness or pride or whatever that may be in my life so that I can produce fruit? Because ultimately, the seed is planted into the soil and the soil literally breaks down, destroys the seed, kills the seed so that the seed can bring about the fruit and the new life ultimately to produce the fruit that we learn about in John 15, 16. Man, we have to go through the seed season and we have to go through the soil season. And then we actually get to produce the fruit that God's called us to produce. And this goes, this goes all throughout our life in the different assignments that, the God, that God calls us into. And so here's what I need you to know tonight. All of you have a call of God upon your life. Every one of you is called to ministry. Now, you may not be called to pastoral ministry. You may not be called to vocational ministry. But if you are a Christ follower, you have a call of God into ministry upon your life. And it's one that he has chosen you for. He is, it's one that he is appointing you to. It is one that he is equipping you for. And I just want to encourage you tonight, ladies, man, I just, I pray the Lord would put a fire in you tonight, not from what I have said, but from his word in John 15, 16, that when, when, when you know the Lord is moving you into a new season or a new assignment or your next appointment, and you say, Lord, I can't do this. You will remember John 15, 16, when the Lord said, listen, I, you maybe, you maybe didn't choose this, but I chose you for it. I chose you for this. I chose you for this assignment. I chose you for this. I have appointed you to it. And I promise I will equip you for it. All right, ladies.
That's what I want you to take from here tonight. Chosen, appointed, and equipped. I want to pray for you. Lord, I come to you right now, and I just pray, Holy Spirit, God, would you bless the reading and the sharing of your word? God, would you take what has been spoken tonight? And Lord, would you just encourage these women? Lord, would you refresh them in their hearts and in their walk? And God, I pray for that woman tonight, Lord, who says, Lord, I can't. Lord, I don't, I'm not equipped. I, I'm, I'm afraid I can't do it. Lord. God, would you, would you just go to her right now through the power of your Holy Spirit, God, and would you just fill her with power from the top of her head to the bottom of her toes? Would you, would you Holy Spirit, right now, I pray that you would just put, put goosebumps all over these women tonight, Lord, as they know that you see them and you are speaking to them. And Father, that you have chosen them. And Lord, that you are giving them everything they need, Father, to fulfill the calling and the purpose and the assignment and the appointment that you've chosen them for. God, give them strength. God, give them courage. God, may they be so uh, refreshed this evening. And I just pray, Lord, uh, that you would do what only you can do. We ask these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Uh, but I, I, that was interesting about being invited. And I, of course, I'm going to love that because my background is being a party planner. So I absolutely love invitations. Right now, I've been scanning Pinterest, looking for invitations. I love to be invited in. And to me, I don't know what that said to you, and, but it said to me that it gave me confidence that to do whatever is coming next. And I, there's a, something I was thinking about is that I want for us to begin to start being uh, what uh, Selena talked about was stirred up and, and believing and anticipating what God has next for us. And that we would feel this vibrancy and confidence in it because we're walking with God. And I love that, Selena. Thank you. Thank you so much. And girls, we are so excited to have you. Does anybody want to share just one word um, that meant a lot to you? Um, just a word. I felt like chosen meant a lot to me. Does anybody have a word? You can unmute um, and just say one word that spoke to you. transformation. All right. I like it. You know, I love how God speaks and just stop me if anybody else wants to jump in and say another word. Um, but I just believe that we're in a, a season that God's wanting to bring uh, us into a place that we thrive under pressure under all these different things. And so that's why I was so excited to have Selena uh, be able to speak to us. And Selena, you, again, you did such a great job and thank you for sharing your story um, with us. And I just wanna uh, uh, let you know that we are praying for you. We are believing for you. And we know that God has something very special for you, just you going into the holidays. So um, we love you and thanks for joining us on the 2020 Refresh event. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday.